Anyway, so today's video is um, an unfortunate video, and here's why. Uh, the content is uh, mean. <laughs> All right, so here's the deal. If you know what graphene is, this is it. Okay, this is it's in a hexagonal pattern. It's the atoms, and here we go. We'll do this. Sorry, a little shakiness, but okay. So the atoms are here, these carbon atoms. Okay, and it's that simple. And it's everywhere where those intersections are. It's a carbon atom. Um, and that's that hexagonal pattern, once again. And usually, this is where it starts getting mean, is here's the thing. It lays out like this, and graphite is, you know, many, 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 many layers of, of this material, okay? When, and, and we'll just draw the atoms right here, because... These are the, the points where they all intersect. We'll do this. All right. What this is, each layer is right around like 0.25 to 0.35 nanometers. So we will just put it out here as 0 0.3 nanometers. Okay. That's how thick these layers are. Now, you can get different ranges because of, uh, I think actually the carbon atoms are 0.32 or something like that. It can be. But what you'll have is the AFM needle will come across if, if you're on the mica, and the mica will be real flat, and the AFM needle will come across and scan it and give you different ranges. We've seen as little as like 0.25, so it is what it is. But we knew that there was graphene there, so it might be just the contour of the the mica or the AFM needle variances. There's there's all kinds of things that are going on there. But you're going to get this average. And if you're going to go and get any results that's really graphene, okay, and this is with even CVD, uh, you're going to have a range of 0.3 to 1 nanometer. Oops, I didn't put the M. Okay, that's it. If it's not 0.3 to 0 0.01, you're above one to three layers, and you're going to see significant losses. And you can go up to six, maybe even eight layers, and you'll, you'll have a very close product. You'll have, you'll have something similar, okay? That's, that's, that's a fact. But after six, eight layers, you have graphite. That is all there is to it. Let's, let's just get that out of the way. Um, many products, if you look, you will see that they are 40 to 60 nanometers in thickness. That is nothing more than milled graphite. That's all there's to it. Uh, be it RGO, graphene oxide, or, quote, graphene nanoplatelets. That stuff is garbage. It is not graphene. Let's just get that out of the way. It is not graphene. Now, I said RGO and graphene oxide, and now we're going to have to display that part. Because remember, if you have this, these like layers, you know, we're talking multiple, multiple, 40 nanometers. Now, remember, one layer is, th is 0.3. So this is well, well over... You know, this is 100 layers. This is over 100 layers. This is 200 layers. Think about that, if I did my math right. That's crazy. It's, it's, it's not graphene. That's all there is to it. It will not do anything, and we'll explain why right here. So, say this is your sheet, okay? That little, you know, see here, the carbon la lattice, and then we zoom it down to this is your sheet. What you'll have when you get graphene oxide is you'll usually what people do is they throw they chuck graphite into a uh, acid the acid dissolves it therefore avoiding the van der Waal forces and then you add a some kind of oxid oxide group of of some sort so this is what happens we're going to just do we're going to do the best thing that you could do is just one group one function group on there okay so you just put one function group on there whatever it is we won't even get on there 
you know, because I don't want to do that much chemistry. <laughs> but that's what happens is you'll have that little little defect right there. Now, when you go through and you look at uh, Raman spectroscopy, you'll see that there's a D band. And most of the time you'll see like this peak and then you'll see the defect band and that. And you'll see something of that nature going on. So, uh, I don't remember which one's higher, this one or that one, but it doesn't matter. But you'll see the D band. That's the D band. And that's the defects. The more defects, the less strong the material is. And here's why. Because in actuality, when you reduce, when you put graphene in, uh, or graphite in the acid and make graphene oxide, this is where the function groups actually happen. All over the place. Across the sheet. Now, each time there's a function group, you're taking away this little lattice shape. You can see that, that lattice shape. You're taking away that lattice shape, and we'll go back over here, and you're doing this. Well, here, let's add some more here, just because. But you're taking away that lattice shape. You're taking that away. So what happens there is if you'll have a function group in the middle of that, okay, however it's bonded to whichever link, it might be bonded like that or whatever, you still don't have that strength between here. And that weakens it exponentially. Or at least that's what the, all the papers that I've read have said. So when you have these, these holes, just think of it like this. If you had a piece of paper and you poke a bunch of holes in it and then you pull on it, it tears very easily compared to one without holes. That's what happens. So when you put it in plastic, if you put graphene oxide or RGO, remember when you reduce this, this is all you're doing. You're, you're just taking away that red, that red one, and reducing it so that now that's some other kind of function group in there. Instead of instead of uh, good old fashioned oxygen, some kind of you know whatever kind of group. There's you know several different kinds. You're now putting something there. Still not carbon. Still not graphene. Um, I don't care what you do, what you say. When you use, when you put RGO, that's not going to work. And here's the science behind that. When you have the graph, uh, the uh, a polymer, a polymer chain. We're going to use a very simple one like this. Okay, doesn't have any magic stuff. And then you have a graphene flake here. Okay, you have a better chance of the material interacting. Okay, now when you have these things going on here, this is what happens. You put that there, and then there's your tennis balls in the way on your RGL. This causes forces against here to then push away, and then you're not going to have a uh, orientation that's correct because all polymers if you know if you stretch the polymer chain out and, and orientate it it will make it stronger this makes it stronger this does not that's just in within the polymer chain nevertheless the fact that you got this thing with full of holes that doesn't do any good there you go and that's why you can't use RGO or GO in there well guess what that also applies to conductivity. Because remember, this is a straight line going across, just like anything else, and this is not. Uh, sorry, I did that through the camera. So you're not going to get as conductive material. That's just a fact. So, what do we do? Well, if your material is 40 to 60 nanometers in thickness, actually, if it's if it's uh, greater than uh, six nanometers, you shouldn't call it graphene at all. You should just kill yourself. Sorry, <laughs> that's the best way I can say that. Um, because six nanometers—that's twenty layers thick. That that's that does not function anywhere near that. Okay. If, if you're above, it, I really say if you're above one nanometer, but we're going to be very forgiving 
But any of this stuff that you see, that it, you just look in there in product description, and if it isn't 0.3 to 0.1 nanometers thick, you're not buying graphene. That's just a fact. You're not buying graphene. Uh, you can get some GO that's, that's down there in this range too. I know that. But whenever you reduce it, a lot of times it goes back to that 40 to 60 because you're reintroducing the flakes back together. So, uh, there you go. That's the mean video. Uh, so, let's recap. RGO, reduced graphene oxide, is not graphene. GO, graphene oxide, is not graphene. They do not perform the same. They do not do what needs to be done in materials or electronics. That's just all there is to it. You're just not going to happen. It's physics. Sorry, guys. Can't argue with that. Uh, it's physics and chemistry. So there you go. Have a nice day.